Max and Bradley. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Ooh, what a powerful, always dark uh, season. <laughs> Congratulations on incredible, I mean, evolutions of your characters. So we watched Gilead transform and now reform, uh, thanks to really Nick and Commander Lawrence and whatnot. I'm curious what your personal reactions are as you read script by script, season by season. Did you expect that Gilead would turn into what it is with New Bethlehem coming in, et cetera? And then do you think that this means that good outweighs evil? My my first reaction is, I don't know if this stuff is going to work. Uh, and it's a very dangerous uh, 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 situation trying, you know, you know, uh, trying to uh, put uh, reforms uh, in place. I, I think that part of the thing that allows Lawrence to do this is a kind of recklessness and sort of existential uh, need to follow the path to redemption that Jin has showed him, right. you know, in the wake of, of, of Eleanor's death. But um, uh, Jin, part of the power of the show is is June's ability to blow on the spark of decency uh, in very different ways uh, with me in a kind of familial paternal way and, and with Nick in, in, a, in a romantic way. But um, I honestly, I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, do we want to make it look easy to, uh, uh, to deal with white nationalism and fascism? Do we want, uh, you know, I don't, uh, doesn't seem to be too easy to deal with. No. So we'll see. There's the social commentary. I'm not optimistic about Gilead changing its ways. Um, it's, it, it, it's, 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 just a, it's just a dark place. I think it's an institution that will remain. There's always going to be people in society who gravitate towards um, what they know. And, the, and it's, it, you know what I mean? And like yeah. tradition and a lot of this stuff is hereditary. Um, and so I'm cynical like Brad about New Bethlehem's chances. Okay, okay, not not much hope there. Um, Max, did you ever see, I mean, from the beginning, from the first script that you had uh, with this character of Nick, did you ever see that he would become a commander? That he would become such a position of power? No, uh, when I read the first script um, for this show, I think Nick had maybe two lines of dialogue and, um, it was really one of the few times in my life, Pamela, that I've made a decision for the right reasons. I, I was in love with this script. I was in love with the world that Margaret originally created and Bruce's interpretation of it. And uh, and it just felt like something um, I would love to watch. This was way before the election. It, it was just filled with, it was just like really a delicious uh, pilot. and. I thought, okay, there may, be, may not be a lot to do in this show and maybe I'll never come back, um, but I would love to be in this one episode of TV and, and be a part of something like this. And so everything that has come afterwards, um, just being involved at all in the show still um, has been a surprise, um, uh, getting so much to do and, 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 and watching this character grow has, has all been really lucky and a blessing. I'm curious because it's such a dark show and obviously, you know, as as people coming, stepping off set, how do you get out of that headspace? And obviously then we step into the into reality with everything that's going on in the world and, and chaos and whatnot and and, and political um, this, that and the other. How do you personally get out of the headspace of your characters? Our set's pretty, pretty light. Okay. Um you know, it's weird. There was one scene that I wasn't in, actually. I wasn't in this scene, but there was one scene this year in season five that uh, made me so uncomfortable. Um, I had to like leave. I had to leave the set. Um, and that's the first time this ever happened to me on the show. Like normally I normally I, I really can contextualize everything and we really have a good time together. Everybody in the show is so effing nice. Um, it's not a heavy environment. Um, but yeah, the first time this year, I felt like, oh, some of the stuff we're doing here is tough. It's really tough. And it's all a reflection of stuff that's happening in, in the real world. So okay. at a certain point, it does become tricky. Yeah, I, it is. This would be surprising to fans of the show how sort of sweet um, the process is. But I had a moment like that um, where I had to do a scene, which we didn't entirely show, but 
led up to where uh, basically June had to talk uh, me her a rapist through a rape, and that was um, that. That's a difficult thing for me to even think about now. And it was on a TV show, um, so those things uh, do come up. But I think in compensation <laughs> for the darkness of the show, there uh, and and I think because it is actually the best way to get the deepest work done. It's it's a very supportive, light, loving set. Also, Canadians are really nice. They don't so, really take themselves serious. We're all going to Canada. <laughs> Thank you so much, you two. Uh, congratulations again on a wonderful season five. And thank you for speaking with LATF. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Pam.